Hey everyone, do you ever see some piece of garbage on places like AliExpress and think that can't possibly work and then just kind of keep scrolling? I did that many times with this adapter right here. Then of course, I caved and I bought one. It has a coaxial F connector at one end, which is designed for carrying radio signals from a TV antenna or from your cable company and are found on things like TVs and other things like cable modems. On the other end, we have an SC APC fiber optic port, which is very common to find on passive optical networking or PON systems used to deliver home and small business internet service. Now, converting fiber to coax isn't super uncommon. You tend to see gizmos like these installed when your cable company realizes that it's clinically insane to continue installing new coax into neighborhoods and apartment buildings. But their back-end systems are held together with three decades of duct tape and can't quite support native fiber internet service using GPON or XGSPON. So in the interim, they'll do the hard part of running the fiber into your home and plop a converter in place so they can plug in a normal cable modem at the other end. Even when you have just regular coax going into your home for TV and internet, there's still going to be equipment on the poles somewhere in your neighborhood that also converts from fiber to coax. Fiber optic cables can do a better job of carrying these signals back to the cable company's head end by carrying more channels and at longer distances than just straight coax. Though obviously, this little green doohickey looks a lot less substantial than the units deployed by cable companies. This is because the larger devices designed for cable modems and so on are bi-directional, so they can transmit and receive signals. This simple one is only a receiver, which means that you can only use it for picking up TV and maybe radio broadcasts. There's also another major thing missing from this little guy, and that's... Any sort of power input. There's no fancy tricks here like using a bias T to feed power to the coax side, kind of like how a satellite receiver will send power to the LNB on the dish. This thing just apparently doesn't need any sort of power supply to work. So it has to be utter crap, right? You can't just convert fiber into radio waves without something powering it, right? Right? Well, to test out this $5 adapter, it needs a signal on the fiber optic cable to pick up. So naturally, I spent $77 on this other adapter that takes in an RF signal on its F connector on the side and spits out an optical signal on this port using a freaking laser beam. I don't have anything that spits out an RF signal directly, so I picked up a cheap RF modulator that I hooked up to an old camcorder. Alrighty, let's test this out. I have an old TV here with a uh, analog tuner, so I'm just going to screw on our receiver to the port on the back here. Then I'll grab a fiber patch cable with an SC APC end and connect that up to the receiver. Okay, so then we'll just connect the other side of this patch cable over to the transmitter. Now we're going to connect the RF modulator to the transmitter. Then onto the RF out port. We'll screw on that side. Now finally we're going to connect up the camcorder to the RF modulator. Alrighty, since the transmitter side doesn't run on pure magic, we have to supply it with some power. And of course we have our video source all set up. So let's get the TV turned on. Okay, and let's just put it on the right channel. And it works. It works perfectly. After doing some side-by-side -side testing, I can't even tell when the converter is in line. It's just perfect. Just to prove that there's nothing funny going on with the coax port supplying power, just wanted to demonstrate that if I slightly remove the coax port, see it's not touching anything right now, but the signal is still being generated. Yeah, see? 
for fun, we can very slowly wiggle the connector out and that reduces the signal enough that we're actually just seeing the signal fall apart. Another thing we could try out with the setup is one of these passive optical network splitters, which are commonly used in fiber to the home deployments because they allow a single fiber strand going back to the provider's head end to be shared amongst multiple customers. The splitters work fine with these fiber transmitters because the laser is powerful enough that you can feed it into a 32 port splitter and still have enough signal left over that these receivers can pick it up. So right now we have our input port here and two outputs. So the one behind the TV and just this one actually not hooked up to anything right now. So since I don't have another small TV down here, I'm gonna bring it up to the living room so we can go on a little field trip and just check that it works with two TVs. And yeah, both TVs are working just fine. The next thing I wanted to test was the uh, output power on this transmitter. The AliExpress listing for it put it at about 4 to 10 dB, which is a pretty big range. I'm going to plug it in and uh, we're sitting at about 8.3, which is on the higher end. So uh, that's pretty good, I guess. One last test that I wanted to do was hooking up a regular TV antenna to the fiber transmitter to see if I can grab the over the air channels and repeat them over fiber. And it looks like I can pull in the local global station, which is 1080i HD, and it looks just fine. Uh, according to the TV's signal meter, the signal strength is exactly the same as when I had the antenna directly connected to the TV. One use for this could be hooking up a nice outdoor antenna that could pull in a lot of channels really cleanly, and then repeat that across a building, potentially to multiple TVs. So, how does this thing work? Well, I'm no electrical engineer, but from some research it looks like we have a photodiode tuned to the 1550 nanometer wavelength light coming from the transmitter. The photodiode will generate a weak electrical charge in the same way a solar panel does. This electrical charge that it makes will be proportional to how bright the light is. So the transmitter can exploit this by converting the radio waves on its input into a varying amount of light to end up with a similar electrical signal on the output. There's some passive components on the receiver that I assume are to clean up the signal and bring it closer to the range that the TV tuner is expecting. From what I can tell, this should work with anything in the 45 to 1000 MHz range as long as it can work one way. If you have any fun ideas for things I could try, let me know in the comments. Thanks, and have a good one.